topic for today topic for today is ovarian assessment and uh, and how do they talk to each other they don't have a mobile phone to say hi they basically talk on some chemical messengers so they talk on basis of certain hormones and they are like <clears throat> can be they work on negative or positive feedback and that date the endometrium but it's in early follicular phase late luteal phase where it lies and based upon that we were giving the treatment to people and as you can see very beautifully here that in the early follicular phase we have low estrogen so fsh starts rising here and that is reflected and we have low progesterone here or they can be medium or they can be primary and secondary then we have a graphene follicle so all these things they release hormones depending upon their maturity cell disorders which will lead to the ovarian reserve falling down very very quickly and such women may go into may have a poor ovarian response or a diminished ovarian response or they go into premature ovarian failure that is less than 40 years so these things keeping in mind we have to see what we can actually change what we can alter some things we can't alter some things we can alter but we have to know that there can be patients without any ovarian function when they have a low egg reserve completely and then there can be ovarian function is uh, not happening properly disordered so we, here we have poor ovarian response due to advanced maternal age is seen and we have to learn to measure the ovarian reserve by doing certain some amount of testing and these test, testings can be at a hormonal level or an ultrasound level and i've told you an average amount of money uh, which always touches my heart which we do to assess the ovarian testing in a woman is around 2500 plus 1000 rupees that's a minimum we charge her somewhere it touches around rupees 5000 or say for a half thousand rupees is a huge amount let's small and large and small enteral this you have to remember so these are the follicles which are releasing amh and this is independent of fsh now when we go to inhibin b inhibin b comes from enteral follicles only and this phase is also being controlled by so it is the number of is, what is afc afc is the number of enteral follicles in both the ovaries this is important and should be seen during the early follicular phase we don't do it later to be done in early follicular phase so day day 2 or day 3 maximum are the good days for doing an afc and afc is very good method to know the outcome in the woman then we also have to know that if you look at the ovary ovary has got these follicles which decline in number as the age advances so we also look at a thing called ovarian volume in case we look at the ovarian volume we take the ovarian volume in three axes uh, the length in three axes so that is uh, length breadth and height and multiplied by 0.512 we get some idea about the ovarian volume just remember that ovarian volume will decrease will decrease with age definitely will decrease with age so would be the fall in the number of follicles in the ovary uh, we are recording uh, 2 to 10 mm follicles for uh, enteral follicular count afc has got low intercycle variability and high inter observer reliability this is why this is what i want to tell you here and in a good center this is a very good tool to get an answer and this is about the ovarian volume ovarian volume will keep reducing as the age advances and in case we have an ovarian volume of less than 3 ml we can be quite definite that the lady is going into premature ovarian failure or she has already gone into it a good ovarian volume should be somewhere between 8 to in ml this you have to know and this is a, not a bad tool this is a good tool to diagnose look at the ovarian volume but better better tool will be doing enteral follicular count so we look at this ovary on the ultrasound we find that there are multiple follicles are seen this is an ovary with normal enteral follicular count and in this ovary we find very few follicles present here and this is an ovary with Low enteral follicular count. 
So this is how when you do an ultrasound, uh, try to find out how many number of follicles are present. And then we have got something called Sono AVC. It's a technology uh, which can actually automated volume calculator. This will tell us how many follicles are present by giving a different color coding and we can easily you know, count them. And we know that how many follicles are present. Just remember that any count more than six to eight is a good AFC in a woman. And, no, 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 no. and when the numbers go more than 12, then we feel that she's got, uh, that she's got maybe having PCOD. So again, an application of doing a Sono AVC, difficult to count the number of pre follicles here, how difficult it, it is to count them. So what we are doing is a simple 2D ultrasound. So in case we do a 3D, in case we do a 3D with Sono AVC, then we are able to get these many good quality follicles can be easily counted and the number can be displayed as 20 or 30, depending upon how much number the computer is counting. Now this is an ovary with a very less ovarian reserve. You find only two follicles are present here. Only two are present here and they give us some idea that this, this woman has got poor ovarian reserve and her AFC is less. So that's the way we look at the follicles and the same similar ovary when we I showed you this, we had so many follicles present here, so many pre follicles present here. When we come here, we barely get one or two. There are two unhealthy ones, small, unequal in size. So immediately we know that her AFC is less. That's the way things work. I think uh, gradually we should all shift ourselves to Sono AVC. We can't do things ourselves. We can take help from some friend who can do it for us. So moving ahead, which patient should undergo ovarian reserve testing? This is important. Can we do it? So we have already discussed that uh, the uh, diminished ovarian response does not necessarily equate with inability to conceive. With a DOR being low, the woman can conceive. She can conceive easily. So this is what we have to understand. And the marker of ovarian reserve should not be used, should not be used as a fertility test for the women who are not infertile or who have untested fertility. This is very important. That for the women who have who have untested fertility, say a woman of 30 years of age who comes to you to know her fertility, we cannot actually give her, we cannot actually give her that how fertile she'll be. That's not possible. We can't do that. So that is, she's got untested fertility and by some values of AMH, we should not be giving her some value or some answer. Age is a very good marker. I always say that try to focus on age and we get a very good answer. As age it becomes more than 38 years, the problems start increasing. So age is a very good marker for all of us. So markers of ovarian reserve should not be used to promote planned oocyte cryopreservation. So a large number of women come to us, they say that they've got AMH of 1.5 or AMH is low. We want to carry out oocyte banking. It should not be used to promote. It can be done, but don't promote it. Until you are not very convinced, don't do it. The decision of oocyte craft preservation should be based upon women's reproductive plans and age. This is a very important thing for us. Then what is poor ovarian response? Poor ovarian response means that the woman when we do her pickup or we have done stimulation, she has got poor outcome. So when the number of follicles uh, X retrieved from her are less than three, we say that she's got a poor ovarian response. Advanced maternal age is one of the important factors. A previous poor ovarian response can be a factor and an abnormal ovarian test will tell us that she's gonna give you a poor response. So. Two out of three of this criteria will tell us that the woman is a candidate for an ovarian response. So either advanced age or any of the values are low like AFC or AMH. And the previous history of a poor ovarian response will tell us that the woman will again won't behave properly. So two episodes 
in case we get we can tell the woman that she is a she'll be a poor responder again so in case after one poor responder we can give her a chance but but with after two poor responses we can be sure that she would be having problems so as i come to the end important point is the finances finances are they play key role in our treatment now we'll, when we look at the price of an amh test that will cost somewhere around rupees 956 so i've taken few rates from the net and we find that the the whole panel which we get from the many of the companies is somewhere around rupees 2300 plus uh, taxes and gst this may amount to around rupees 2700 rupees we can do the complete hormonal profiling of the person plus an ultrasound at rupees 1100 approximately so around 4500 is the price we spend values of amh which are very important cost around rupees 1090 to us then we add, may have to add thyroid somewhere to not in ovarian testing but thyroid may be added at a price of around rupees 400 same thing with other hormones but now look in case you look at this dummy picture when the woman comes we are ordering for her the whole fertility panel in the fertility panel we have got tsh we have got prolactin we have got progesterone we have got estradiol we have got luteinizing hormone we have got follicle stimulating hormone so i'll take a small break here and i like to invite all of you to give comments is this is this panel correct or we should be uh, doing something much more simpler like a child having a pasta anyone anyone if you can make a comment upon this sir we should go for amh and um, prolactin and uh, and tsh this is all and tsh yeah perfect i think uh, this is in 100% correct answer but i will make it 110% correct in some time as you move it but it's a very good answer dr anjita fantastic so take home message which you have given is accepted that's the way it should be done we should not be doing unnecessary things for the patient yes some people carry out uh, dynamic testing with the uh, promethine challenge test look things like promethine challenge test are not to be done they are not to be advised in promethine challenge test uh, we are normally looking at the values of fsh on day, fsh on day 2 and then on day 9 after giving after we give clomiphene so what happens is that in case we give clomiphene from day 2 to day 6 the woman will make estrogens and e2 comes e2 will suppress the fsh i have told you that e2 inversely inversely proportional that we already spoken fantastic so when e2 goes high then fsh will have to go low but in a woman who has got poor ovarian response the values of e2 are low and in even are low as a result fsh goes high so when fsh is high on both day 2 and it goes higher on day 9 this means that values of e2 are low in this woman and uh, the e2 is not able to suppress that fsh so we say that it's a dynamic testing but it should be abundant it's a very non specific test so clomiphene challenge test should be actually no no longer be done most sensitive are afc and uh, amh for the people combined tests are not very good so packages are not very good i think a single ovarian testing uh, are pretty nice in case we want to shift on to that uh, rightly so so single ovarian reserve testing is a good option to all of us result of ovarian tests are not useful are not useful in predicting the likelihood of unassisted pregnancy in women with fertility if with infertility nor do they have offer clinically meaningful improvement over already available pregnancy prediction models so in a, in a woman about which we don't know who are either infertile um, um, who or who are young we cannot give a model by which by any of these tests can tell her that she won't conceive so the marker of ovarian reserve do not appear to predict pregnancy after simulation or iui for unexplained infertility they do not predict current reproductive potential among women with unproven fertility this we have spoken again so we find that they can only do one thing that they can tell us the ovarian responsiveness what number can be expected that's all they can do 
but it cannot give any prediction. An ALT model is a better model for the prediction for pregnancy, a pretty complicated one. It takes many factors, but ovarian reserve is not. Extremely low human values should not be used to refuse treatment in IVF. You get an image of 0.3, don't say that, go in for a donor. Or don't say that, go do that, do that. It can, we should not be using it to refuse treatment in IVF or an IUI. They have weak associations with qualitative outcome. So quantity, okay, but quantity, uh, qualitative, they want very weak associations and <clears throat> they poor ovarian response to maximal stimulation during IVA procedures reflect DOR and therefore ovarian reserve testing is NSS. So they say that in case we have done an OPU or we're doing an IUI and we, we know the age and we know the AFC of that person, they are good enough to give some prediction then to start carrying out multiple testing. So most simplest tests which we can do are AMH and AFC, which Dr. Ranjita brought out. I fully agree, agree with you, agree with her. And thoughts I leave here is for all of you is that don't spend, don't spend so much of money on these testings. So age is important. This one, you can't be sure. Can't be sure, can't be sure, not to be done. So we are left with AMH here. Ovarian volume, can't be sure. Blood flow, not important. We're left with AFC here. So AMH and AFC are here. And all these tests are not recommended. So now in case you look at what is the best method from my side to make it 110% outcome, I'll say age and AFC. AMH can also wait. Until you're doing an IVF, AMH can also wait. So the right method for us to be to focus on age and AFC of the person. So this is how I come back to the old chart again, and this is it. So confirm any sort of uh, outcome in a woman, we should be banking primarily on AFC and AMH only. Thank you so much. I have uh, ended my talk here, taken nearly one hour. So now we are open for any queries from your side. Sir, uh, you said uh, we are not supposed to uh, we are not supposed to do uh, AMH on patient with OCs, but sometimes it happens that she comes with amenorrhea, and then uh, you have to give her withdrawal bleeding for menses, then you can and do. then again stimulate her. Then you can do. But then, but then uh, during such menses, can we do AMH on day two or day three? With all bleeding, ke baad you can do, but not during the OC pills. When she is on OC pills, when she is on UPL phase, then you cannot do. But after she already had a withdrawal bleeding, then you can do. Okay. Sir, one Thank thing. You. How this, um, these patients early in early age group, we find uh, low AMH. What, what is this, the cause of this? I, I didn't get it. What are you saying? Well, uh, in the lower age group, 25 or 28. We find uh, low image. Yeah. So I told you that as the sperm count in the men, you look at the sperm count in the men, it is coming down gradually. Yes. Yeah. Same way, there are certain things in the in the nature which is happening. We still don't know why it is happening, or we are over diagnosing it. You find that image in the woman is coming down, and so is the ovarian reserve. Like the sperm count, when I started my career around 20 years back in uh, about 20, 30 years back, in fact, the normal sperm count was 200 million. And now it's barely 14 million. Same way, the egg reserve is also now coming down. We never bothered about these such reserves before because we were not much concerned. We didn't have the facility till 20 years, say 15 years back. And then when it started, we were going in a big way on the donor cycles. Egg donor and embryo donor, but now people are becoming wiser, and that is the wrong thing to do. Also, so we are, we are testing women more, and we find that they have low AMH. Why is it happening? Is it due to the nature, or is it due to some lifestyle disorder? I don't have any answer. But yes, like the men, the women are now having large. The women are smoking nowadays. Large yeah. number of women smoke. Large number of women they take a drink, and it's very common to when I talk to the people, do you smoke? No, I don't smoke. I only take hookah. I take shisha. Sir, shouldn't we do prolactin? 
they are taking yes. alcohol and they will add on to all these things i'm sure yes thank you sir good morning sir am i audible to you uh you are coming and going pratibha you are coming and going you are putting sir yes sir what question is there sir few days back i had the patient please put uh, in your camera please put, who somebody is talking please put in your cameras let's uh, let's say hello to each other sir good morning the woman here sir hi how are you fine sir very good morning how are you sir very sir fine. one question in cases of polycystic ovaries when we tested their amh it was around 15 20 and when they come after 8 or 10 years it will be 3 4 do they respond well sir yeah they respond well that is not a problem the amh values uh, 10 to 15 to 3 in few years it doesn't happen that easily i mean they take some time to fall down i don't know what is that age parameter you are taking but they respond well uh, any amh more than 1 is a good amh from my side no no but initially diagnosed cases of polycystic ovaries with higher level of amh when those come down does it mean that she is going to uh, uh, like a pof like thing no 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 let's not go into i don't have any answer to that very um, as such because there are no parameters or algorithms we have but one thing is for sure that uh, that amh of any amh more than one is a good amh that's all i can say at this point of time Thank how you. do we know the told you quality we can't make out no way to make out the quality that is the main issue here quantity we are counting Thank you. Yes, Pratibha. You Good had some. So, let me also check the other patient. I think I think Pratibha's query first. Uh, Pratibha, you can. I can see a lovely Ganeshi behind you. Yes, sir. Sir, few days back, I had a patient. Sir, she was having AMH of point five four with irregular cycles. Sir, outside outside she was diagnosed as a case of uh, premature ovarian failure. Sir, and uh, the irregular period sometimes two to three months only she will be getting uh, spotting only. AMH when I did it was zero point five four sir. AFC was one to two follicles in both ovaries. So uh, in second time when I called her to see again after giving uh, this they have to guess her and all. I couldn't find any uh, find any follicles sir. In these cases, what we are supposed to do where uh, AFC and AMH they are not correlating with each other and how to proceed like where I am not finding any AFC how to know like whether she will be responding to an IV cycle or not. Okay. How much is her age? First of all, can you please come again? She is thirty-two years of age, and three years of married life. Young girl. And how much was her AFC? One to two, you told AFC, me. AFC one to two follicles only, sir. That two uh, one to two millimeters only. And AMH? AMH was zero point five four, but now I doubt whether it was that also. It was lesser than that. We so far clear, है ना? This is clear that she she won't respond. Such a big, such a see age is or age is on her side, but such a zero point two, zero point three AMH and one or two AFC are see what happens. You have to know one thing, uh, uh, Madam. That you have to know one thing very clearly that when the ovaries, when the AMH becomes very low, though even the age may be okay, her ovaries have gone into a burnout syndrome. It's a burnout syndrome. Something like I give an example for uh, in my classes to people is that. Before ovaries they get shut down, they burn out like a candle. You look at the candle wick. Before the candle has to go back, candle glows very quickly, and then suddenly it'll go blank. Same thing with the patient in ICU. Any patient who's on ventilator from say ten fifteen days, one day he will wake up and start talking. Where he like to meet everyone, and then he will go. That's the last fight ovaries giving before ovary collapses. So such follicles which are present, one or two follicles they won't grow well. Such people, such women have got problems in the quality also and quantity also. You really can't do much. You can try one one out cycle. You can uh, you in case her uh, uh, tubes are open, in case she is insisting, do an IUI. I have got IUI pregnancies in such cases, but otherwise you have to go in for an IVF. In case you get a poor ovarian response, you don't get a good quality egg. I think you should go in for a donor cycle in such cases. Good morning, sir. Let us all help, sir. Like to uh, go uh, to give letrozole and see whether the ovaries are responding or not, and then suppose uh, like if it happens that pre uh, pre enter follicles they convert to enter follicles. No, I think they will convert with any, any drug. They will convert with uh, clomiphene and letrozole also, tamoxifenol. They will convert with any. So, is my I can't say. Should I try for two to three cycles or should I uh, directly tell her? Sir? In such a case, in such a case, in case patient is insistent, should at thirty two always do her own case. Point three AFC, point three AMH is not a bad AMH. First of all, 
AFC of 1 to 2 is not a bad AFC at 30. 0.2 AMH, sir. I did embryo pooling and uh, the patient is conceiving with twins, sir. But yeah, in but this case, but the same thing, sir. But this patient, sir, I, I don't find any AFC, no, sir. So... Then what you should do is give her, I've told you, my biggest friend is AFC. As I told you that I believe in age and AFC. You can give her some DHE or something, give her some uh, some medicines and co-cues for around one or two months and try again. It doesn't work yes. out that you're going for a donor cycle. See, you have to understand that uh, we can't fight nature. Yes, Science is there, but you can't fight nature. So, but yes. one cycle, you must try with her. You fail, then she goes in for a donor cycle. But not directly. Okay. Definitely okay. not. Okay, okay. 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 Sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, sir. Dr. Panjshir Gupta here. Hi, hi, how are you? Uh, sir, my two questions is there. Uh, just like that, you have uh, mentioned about age and uh, age and correlation with each and everything. I want to own two questions: AMH, AFC, and number of M2s in during uh, after uh, denudation. What is the correlation between these three? Also, second question is there. I know, sir, you have been very much uh, interested in the stem cells and uh, regenerative. Uh, have you tried something uh, like the PRP in the uh, in the cortex injection? So it will going to increase the this uh, yield of the oocytes for M2 in the low uh, AMH or uh, the POR. Uh, coming to the research part, I have not done because uh, PRP ovarian injection uh, is not a recommended te technique till now. So it's a more of a research thing which has never intrigued me. I do a lot of ovarian cortex freezing and I do a lot of biopsies, but putting PRP doesn't have any recommendation till now. It's an add-on, so I don't do anything which is not ethically correct at this point of time. Now, coming to the correlation, since I do my own embryology also uh, at a large level, you'll always find that the women who have got age more than 40, the number of M2s will be less in them. But the women who are younger, they'll have more number of M2s. This is what is my experience. And uh, the number of eggs which you retrieve are not very different. In case you get uh, seven or eight eggs in a woman more than 40 years of age, we do get around 85% the level of uh, competency levels of uh, pickup as per the uh, the research KPIs, the performance indi research perform performance indicator. It fits into that. But they may be GVs or they may, they may be uh, uh, M1s. So number of M2s will be always more when we are doing case case in a young girl. That is for sure. About the, a, uh, about the AMH and FA, AFC correlation with M2s? 100%. Big correlation. It's a big correlation. Because for, first of all, you get more number of... See, I've told you one thing very clearly. That these are the tests for number, not for the quality. Not for the quality. Never their, their factor of the quality. Till around 38, 39, quality doesn't go bad. It is fine. But I found on 39, 40 years of age, the quality will go bad. And we start getting more of immature X after we cross the age of 39, 40. Before that, the quality in terms of metaphase to sites is quite nice. So one st question ahead of that. While doing the scanning, you have uh, told about uh, we, uh, it's uh, automatic volume control. So no... VAC. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, like that also, we can do the power Doppler of the uh, you can't, you power can't. color Doppler for no, the no, volume no. of the uh, no, no, no. blood flow. No, no, no. Blood flow, blood flow blood blood around flow. the blood. Ha, sir. Uh, ring of this uh, fire ring around each follicles, if it is more than 75% or 50%, does it predict a number no, of no. M2s? No, no, no. Not here. They are meant for graphene follicles. They are, they are meant for the mature or pre-ovulatory follicles. Somebody uh, put something on PSV. Yes. Somebody put a query on PSV just now. And there are two methods uh, to look at the uh, the health of a follicle. There's a PSV and second is when we look at the perifollicular blood flow more than 75%, 65-75%. But they are for the mature follicle. They are not Many meant for mature follicles only. How is the so prediction of before, uh, before uh, giving trigger 100%, 100%. There are two things which should which we should do in every case. Uh, there are two things. One thing we should do for the endometrium, and one thing we should do for the uh, one other thing we should do it for the ovarian follicle. So two two type of things, color Doppler we should always do in today's world. One is uh, doing the RI and PI of the uterine artery and spiral arteries for the endometrium. 
And for the follicles, you normally, uh, you always check out the perifollicular uh, vascularity and the peak systolic, how, what rate the blood is flowing. So these two things should be done in case you want to have a good outcome. They should be done by you. And totally with you, they should be done. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank but you. easier to do this is perifollicular vascularity. That more than 75% of vascularity is present or not, it's easy to do and that should be done. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. You. Good morning, sir. Dr. Rama speaking. How are you? How are you? Uh, fine, sir. I'm a fan of you. And uh, what uh, I wanted to confirm that because I get mostly the poor patients. Mm -hmm. So that way, at whatever stage the patient comes, whatever is, first I take her history, seminology confirmed, and then I go in for ultrasound. If she is in the mid cycle for ovulation mm -hmm. and endometrial thickness and any other anomaly or not. And if not in the mid cycle, she has crossed the mid cycle, then I ask her to get her AFC done on day, day two or three. And if I am satisfied with these things, I don't advise any other test. If these are fine, AMH, etc., I don't. But if these are a failure, then I go in for AMH. Is it fine? Actually, Dr. Rama, when you are uh, giving plain, simple ovulation induction or doing an IUI, that's yes. okay. But Jeb, when you want to do an IVF, I think uh, we yes. should always uh, look for AMH uh, because in case the AMH values are more than 3.5 or more than 3, then we should uh, stimulate with 150, not higher units because the end point is not getting large number of eggs nowadays. The end point is getting, not putting the lady into problem. Now, getting uh, many people say that we are doing an entire cycle, we'll get 40x, we'll get 40x, and then we'll give her an uh, agonist trigger. There won't be any ovarian hyperstimulation. But I think the woman is affected once we start, um, uh, and the number of uh, once we cross more than 15x retrieved, the quality will again start falling down. So, quality will fall down after 15x. Uh, uh, the person doing the ultrasound should be highly reliable. One yeah, that is and uh, other is uh, this regarding AMH. I had a patient who lost her e young son about the about age of 25, and she was 45 by, by that age, and she wanted to conceive. I got her ultrasound done, and I could see the this uh, mature follicle, and she conceived her also. That way, you are right, but she had under she conceived spontaneously, but she underwent a misfortune and then this is always there, and we should be careful of what we are. Uh, yes, another patient I had an AMH of 6.9, and and when she got repeat after one year, she's below 35, it was 2.7. So, these things I have failed to understand these uh, lab errors. Though they are both from the standard lab. Hmm. I know these things are always there and uh, we really don't have any answer to. So, so we, only solely uh, regarding the tests, we should, uh, uh, if they are in doubt, I think they should be repeated, doubly confirmed. Correct. To be sure that the report is reliable. Yeah, correct. Nothing wrong. But I think when you look at the age, AFC and AMH, they normally match. So, but in case yes. you get, get any big variability, you can always go in and do it. I fully agree with you. Be liberal in doing such a thing. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, so good, Dr. Morning. Uh, good morning. I just, good morning, Dr. Jyoti. So, I just, you know, there was a query which was coming again and again about somebody, people are writing about uh, the quality of the you know, pre-teased yes, contact. So, remember that uh, we, as I've told you, uh, I have in the group, I have already sent you a chart. In case you have not got it, check again about the pre-trigger evaluation of the follicle and endometrium. So all our people, all my uh, my you know uh, chelas and friends and my teachers, which are in the aluminous group, they have got four charts. One of the, one of the charts is there on follicle and endometrium pre-trigger. Kitne pe trigger karna ideally? So I have told you that for an endometrium, we always look at RI and PI. Inke numbers fixed hai, RAPI ke. RAPI uterine artery is also of the spiral arteries. Something called PSV. That is the PSV should be more than 10 centimeters per second. That is for the follicle and more than 75% of the follicles should have blood supply. These, this, I just wanted to cover it up so that I kill this point here uh, uh, now forever uh, before I take your next query. 
the same question i was going to ask <laughs> thank you sir i can read your mind <laughs> hello good morning dr talwar uh, uh, whether uh, dha helps in amh below 1 we have uh, we need more studies ma'am and uh, there is it's not a concrete answer see I'll, i'll like to just sum it up that's the only thing only only drug which which is an antioxidant or which is a nutraceutical which works and which has been approved by the fda and other companies is the carnitine for the men the rest all are under research i write dha quite a lot sometimes i also give melatonin to the people but they are all they are not they don't have any solid recommendation that they are going to work what Consequ- is your experience what are what are the results you got in dha mix madam very very mixed ma'am i have we have not done any magic with this any It's, success you got with dha you don't know whether they told you that number we are giving dha for the number fine but the number as, as the science is growing they say number is very different from the quality so even if you get from a woman 2x at 40 years of age we don't know the quality of that egg so once and we are giving dha for both quality and the number the number of x won't increase with dha quality may improve so the quality ke bare mein is a big question mark the low amh affect quality, we don't know Okay. How, how long you have given DHEA? Three months. Two to three months. Two to three months. Depending on three the months. size of the follicle. Two to three months. Okay. Yes. Somebody else was asking something. Please raise. So, for example, if in and uh, we can't hear you. I can see few raised hands. Karuna, your hand is up. No, I can't. I can't hear you. Am I audible to you guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Yes, audible. I'm not able to sir, listen. So that's it. From, yeah, correct. Sir, from yeah, your experience, uh, some uh, remedies for a low AMH and getting the good response for a outside quality, other than age factor. I think these drugs are. I don't know about the drugs. Uh, see, one good quality, one drug which I use very frequently, cocaine. You can use cocaine. You can add some antioxidants, and I think a healthy diet. These are the only things. But only thing which is which I always do very rarely is that rule of any thyroid abnormality or a collagen abnormality. So correct thyroid, correct collagen, and correct vitamin D. in case these three are corrected i think you can just give some coqs and uh, dha uh, i was using uh, a lot of uh, androgel testosterone gels i have used quite a lot i use growth hormone once in a while depending upon whether patient can afford but i'm not very sure about how well they work frankly i don't know but these are all the add ons which need a lot of studies and they are not recommended they are add ons only growth hormone dha coqs i would like to add Sir, any Ayurvedic medicines or homeopathy? Because yeah. I know you are very much fond of this. Me, yeah. I I give lot of uh, Ashwagandha, Ashoka Rest. I give uh, these two drugs, and but I still don't know whether they are working on the follicles or not. But endometrium definitely yes, it works very well on the endometrium. The endometrium improves, but I don't know about the ovarian follicles. I just give it for ovarian uh, say say regeneration. Coqs and uh, Ashwagandha are good for the ovaries. Because nowadays, sir, in the research, uh, the mesenchymal stem cell harvesting from the adipose tissues, adipose or fat muscle nanografting, fat nanografting. They have been uh, doing the studies in Israel also. You have uh, gone to that lab also. We must so, do that for a long time. Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, mm-hmm. They have been studying going on on this uh, injecting the peri uh, cortex of the ovary. Do means uh, have you come across any of this patient? Because they just we have heard on the Articles, paper, because ground reality, we don't know anything about it. Because you, you are the boss for us. No, no actually, yes, I have done the same technique on Haifa. Yeah, we are talking about. I am trained there in embryonic stem cell regeneration. Um, I am in touch, but these things still need. See what happens that till that time, you don't get an outcome. 
one odd paper here and there and you put prp see dr gupta you put prp in the ovary ab she has got low amh and low afc and now that do follicle bana or she becomes pregnant and you are saying that prp has made the follicles but probably those follicles were competent <laughs> very very we just pick up a technology do it and we come on the newspapers and the multimedia and we say yeah, that for we, future future sir future 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 is very very bright future is very very bright but presently it is not so future and the future will be hi suman future will be so beautiful i am telling you this uh, because i have worked at such places and this is my passion you need anything just go and there will be atm machines you put your finger machine will come and take your blood sample they will take your blood make your chromosomes induce pluripotent stem cell lines they'll they'll induce ips this is called pluripotent stem cells normally we make it from embryos now your blood will make mesenchymal chemical cells will make pluripotent stem cell line and we can make anything for you you want to make cornea cornea will be prepared for you just puncture i want cornea i want kidney patch i want in fact my whole career started with uh, making cardiac patches i'm very fond of making heart patches that's the way i worked for two years on making the when someone has got an mi how to replace the uh, the um, the myocardium so how to make is glue this called cardiac patch so you'll get a tube in your home after th- two months this is your cardiac tube so go to your cardiologist after an mi he is going to just put a needle and inject glue inside inside your heart heart function will come back your kidney is not working you get a tube at your home after two months i will definitely inject kidney with your hepatocytes this is going to happen this future i have i am connected but abhi nahi ha sir because even in the this he in china he has developed the twins baby where he has been uh, deleted the genes which is uh, for hiv and suddenly the whole scientist scientist has been come across and banned him because the baby who has been uh, deleted for the hiv uh, genes he must be, she the baby have been uh, exposed to the japanese encephalitis this is a pros and cross of deleting the genes for having uh, some other disease and uh, gene editing that was our asking for you sir hello 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 sir hello hello things are there everywhere these things are there everywhere the institute where we worked and in israel they have stem cell lines of every congenital anomaly you can make out yes sir. it may be down syndrome edwards patows they keep all the stem cell lines and they nick that gene nick that gene and yes, try to make the these things are happening but i think we are as of now 10 to 15 years away correct sir thank you sir thank uh, so fine dot karuna uh, any low reserve a low reserve woman any role of karyotyping I, i think is very important when in case a woman has got uh, premature ovarian failure we should do karyotyping and genetic analysis and if you want to get an answer uh, nothing wrong with it but for getting we don't want an answer normally we just want to be going for a egg donor cycle but in case possible try to find out the reason for her premature ovarian failure that should be done do her karyotyping and there can be some genes which can lead to premature ovarian failure those can be detected yes anybody else i just Excuse check me, the chat yes Excuse me, sir. Yes. yeah i yeah. want i want i want to know that that the, what is the role of giving 10 days for for 10 days letrozole what is the role of this 
Somebody will have to switch switch themselves off. Letrozole, letrozole. I have already for all our gang. I have given the booklets. Two booklets I sent to all, uh, which has got got all the protocols of uh, of uh, letrozole protocols. Letrozole protocols. This is the group, ma'am. In case you look at uh, the uh, the our alumnus group, it is there. So letrozole booklet. Uh, that this there are ten ten uh, uh, protocols for giving somebody letrozole. I mean, I'll just cover, and we have already covered it in the last class. Uh, they, what we're talking about is an extended protocol. Yeah, what we do is we do a normal protocol that is two point five milligram for five days. Then there can be a super ovulation protocol, SOP. They call it a SOP protocol. The one is NP, other is SOP protocol. SOP protocol is five milligram per day. Then there is a stair step protocol, two point five five. Two point five, five, seven point five, and ten. That is called stair step protocol or a stair protocol. Then there is an extended protocol. Uh, that means it was all two point five or five milligram for ten days. Another protocol which we normally use is I don't use. I don't use. It is twenty milligram single dose protocol. We give a single dose of uh, letrozol to a patient on day three, day four, then wait. So as you understand, ma'am, all these protocols are important as we are moving towards. As we're moving towards ovarian resistance, so in case we give somebody, there's an old concept called clomiphene resistance and clomiphene failure. In case you remember, nowadays we don't talk about that. So clomiphene failure meant you have given, he is ovulated but not pregnant. Resistant meant that you have given but she doesn't ovulate only. That resistance. So 100 milligram. For three cycles or maximum four cycles is we're going to call people resistant or failure. Now for letrozole, clomiphene is a drug which is 60 year old. Letrozole is a drug which is barely 15, 16 years old because four years it was banned also. It's still banned in many parts of the world. Yeah. So letrozole we don't have letrozole resistance or failure till now. I'm not aware in case there is any definition like that. In case somebody has, you can tell me. I learn from you. I'm not aware. Whenever a woman doesn't ovulate with two point five, we go to five. In case she doesn't uh, re uh, uh, respond to five, we can we can give two point five, five, seven point five, and ten. उसके साथ भी नहीं होता. Then some papers are there which says go to two point five milligram for ten days. These are all. There is no logic, but it's just you know getting more FSH. That's the only point. Getting more FSH. So. PCOS badly resistant ovaries they will respond like that. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, prolactin should not be done in every case. Always, 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 Kunam. Prolactin is the I've told you. TSH, prolactin, vitamin D. In case we na kabi aage nahi badna. Prolactin should be less than twenty five. TSH less than two point five. Vitamin D more than thirty nanograms per ml. Don't start your case without. TSH, prolactin, vitamin D, but they are for different functions. So no? today we talk about ORT. In ORT, I didn't go to these things, but you are right. You caught me on the on the right track. We should be doing it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pula. Anyone else would like to ask any questions? Uh, Hello, sir. Hi, hi. Sir, I want to ask a question. Uh, sir, God, no, please put on your camera. Sir. Hi. Suman, hi Suman, how are you? How are you? Yes. Bye. Thank you, sir. Very good. How are you? Bolo, bolo, Suman. Tell. Uh, sir, I've got a patient who's thirty-eight year old. She has had a few cycles earlier with someone else, with Promethen, and uh, she gets a follicle, but it doesn't rupture even with SCG. And uh, mm -hmm. I did the hormonal profile. Her hormonal profile on day two is FSH is normal eight nine, but uh, her AMH also ten two point two. AFC on the scan is like very low. Uh, so it didn't correlate with it. Her estradiol is three eighty or something. Like it was raised, and the thing is, like I gave her recombinant SCG. Okay, that will rupture the egg. It didn't in the first cycle. She got a follicle with gonadotropins. Uh, one only one follicle. In the second mm -hmm. cycle, I added antagonist. Probably there is some hormonal disturbance. I should just add it and see if there is mm -hmm. anything that I can do and give her recombinant SCG again. But it, it again didn't rupture. So. Uh, Like does it correlate with the quality of the eggs at this stage? Because her AFC yeah. on the scan appears very low. Low, na? 
how about her endometriosis or any other ovarian pathology or thyroid or uh, prolactin all these three three things can lead to poor response to hcg uh, they, they are all vitamin normal. d uh, vitamin d is also normal because she was referred also because of her constantly like luf in all cycles but there was she had before also her accident rupture i think such a case if it is not she's not happening in her the the right protocol for her will be give her a break give her a break put her on ocps for 2 3 months and then do it again there is yeah. no reason but, 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 uh, i did one cycle of ocp in between these two uh, cycles but achha, achha, <laughs> that uh, also didn't work because i am worried if i take it for ivf uh, would we be requiring donor eggs for her or can we actually do the ivf with her own eggs hello 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 sorry i don't know why i am exiting by itself i think it's happening so i think that uh, i personally feel that in such a case give her there is when there is no other reason known give her around 2 2 months of give, give her a break actually give her a break and give her uh, prolactin and uh, sorry uh, give her ocp pills and then try again i don't have any answer to this question why is it happening in into her organ share share with me her reports let me see her reports yes, sure. Sure. Let me do her follicle monitoring. Um, let yes. me have. One, I don't have any answer. Right, sir. So my query is like, if I take her on to IVF, would this happen? Like, is it like you might end up with an empty follicle or something like that? No, no, no. That's very simple. For uh, for uh, when you do an IVF, these things they don't happen because that time you are doing there, uh, you are going to trigger with uh, trigger with the uh, agonist. So looking for LH right. peak, LH they create, na? You are looking at the LH more yeah. than twenty two, twenty three. Okay, sir. Unmute. What is happening, Sandhya? Why am I going out again and again? So your network will be unstable. No, it is the top top network I have got. Top so network I have got. I don't know. Is somebody removing me quickly and then putting me back? Just see that. No, 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 sir. No, sir. So uh, uh, the question was uh, when we give when we do a stimulation when when we give a trigger here, we look at the efficacy of the trigger, and efficacy is checked by the looking at the levels of LH. Uh, by the LH uh, testing, uh, that is checked in the blood LH. So there won't be any problem yes, of that yes, nature. Yes. Number one, number two, when the HCG look at the levels of uh, but anyhow, whatever is happening, if you have to normalize her periods, give her around two months. I think she should respond or send me the reports. Let me have a look at them in case I can dig in something. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sure. Thank sir, you. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sir, Thank you. chart. Sir, chart is not. Uh, we have not received the chart of uh, endometrium and uh, very old trip monitoring. Hello. Hello. I think my signal is going. I'll just sum it up, uh, Doctor Gupta. That has been sent to Group Two and uh, Group Three. You are in Group One. You are in Embryology batch. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is any gap you have? So that is for uh, Group Two. Yes, that is the reason. Uh, sir, will it get? How can I get it? <laughs> I tell it. So before my net goes off, I think I'll say goodbye and I'll invite Doctor Ruchira to say uh, sum it up. Hi Garima, how are you? My signal will be going. I'm good, sir. How are you? 
Fine, fine, fine. So, Dr. Ruchir, I'm so sorry. My signal is just sinking again and again. Yes. So, you can just sum it up. Ma'am, you are not audible. Sir, I don't know. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Uh, sir, you gave an absolute uh, uh, different paradigm to a topic which is we are dealing with day in and out. And the only three carry home messages one need to take is that uh, out of the plethora of tests, AF, AFC and AMH. They are the simplest and most sensitive tests one needs to offer to our patients for ORT. And then uh, they have rightly brought out these are the markers, but uh, they have been only reflecting the oocyte quantity and yield and should in any way they are the poor indicators as far as the reproductive or fertility potential is considered. So they should never be offered as a fertility test or neither we should be denying any of our clients for want of fertility just because of any of these abnormal tests. So I think these are the messages one which are well taken. Thank you so much for bringing out the concepts and uh, giving a new meaning to the topic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Sir is not here. <laughs> Okay. Okay, ma'am. So thank we'll you. End the, end the class. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I see it. Thank you, ma'am.